Hello everyone. In this session, let, let's continue, continue with the previous session. So we have seen example 1 and example 2. So let's see the example 3 and 4 in this session. So when switch 1 is pressed, L1 should on. When switch 2 is pressed, L1 should go off. So here they are having two inputs and only one output. So what are the two inputs? SW1 and SW2. And one output is L1. So let's see the animation here. So they have turned on the SW1. L1 was on. Now it is off because they have turned on the SW2. Let's see it again. Yeah, turning on. L1 is on, on right? So when SW2 is on, it gone off. Yeah, so initially it is an off condition. So when you turn on this, it is on. If you turn on, it will go off. So let me see how to do this in a software. So this is very important, right? Because so far we have seen how to turn on an output. Now, they are turning off the output. But with a different switch. It's not with the same switch. If it is the same switch, you will turn off that, right? But... In the question, they have turned on SW1. They are not turning off in the old problem, right? After that, they are turning on some different switch, which is making your L1 to go off, right? So, see, uh, this is a way to connect, right? To turn on SW1 is directly connected with the L1. So, there is some rules in uh, ladder logic. You should uh, have it in your mind. To understand the logic better. The first one is whenever you want to turn on some output that output should connect with that input directly without any disturbance. Without any disturbance in the kind like there is no need to connect any input or contact anything in between. It's not like that but even though you are connecting some inputs or uh, some contacts in between the input and output it should not uh, you know, give any disturbance to the output, right? So, you should connect directly with your input. So, I am connecting SW1 directly with L1, right? So, now, if I turn on, this will on. Now, I am going to give one more input which will make my L1 to go off, right? So, L1 is already in on condition. How to make this off? I need to disturb the line, right? See, this line was so clear. There is no disturbance in this line. That's what this is on. If I disturb this line, this fellow will go off, no? So, that is the logic. So, how to put the SW2 now? So, let's connect like this. Let's give SW2 like this as a normally open contact. I should give I colon 0 slash 1, right? Now, if I connect like this, what will happen? So, let's see that. Because whenever you are going to give some input, you should finalize whether it should be a NO contact or NC contact. See, when I am turning on, my output is not on. Because this fellow is restricting to enter. This power flow is stopped here. So, SW2 should not give any disturbance to SW1, right? So, it should not give any disturbance means I should connect a NC contact like this. I should connect the NC contact. Else, it will be producing some disturbance when SW1 is on. See, if I give NC contact, let's see what will happen. Let's go for online. Run. Now, see, if I turn on, it will not give any disturbance. It is directly turning on my Output. So, this is what I have told. If you want to turn on an output, there should not be any disturbance. So, even though I have put one contact, that is not creating any disturbance, right? So, now, here also you can get your second concept also. What is the second concept? Whenever you are turning on your SW2, your L1 should off. Suppose if you toggle this, your L1 is off. That's it. You got the logic now. So, 
What is the conclusion means? If you want to turn off some output, use a normally closed contact. So, normally open contact is to make the, make the path or make the output to turn on. And normally closed contact is to break the output break the line or break the circuit anything you can take right so if you want to turn on use n o if you want to turn off use n c that's it right so this is the solution for the exercise number three whenever sw1 is on see i'll repeat it again this was the initial say, stage right so you are turning on l1 is on so, if you are turning this on, L1 is off. That's it. Right. So, this is example 3. So, let's see what is example 4. When SW1 is pressed, Q0 should on. When SW2 is pressed, Q0 should off. When SW3 is pressed, again it is on. Yeah. So, it is off now. When this is pressed, again this is on. Got it? Yeah. SW1 is pressed, L1 is on. SW2 is pressed. It is going to press. Yes, L1 is off. So here they are having three inputs and one output. They have given Q0 here. And uh, in the animation, it was mentioned as L1. So, any, any name you can give us a description, right? So, let me take L1. Instead of Q0, let me take this as L1, right? So, let's see how to do this in a software. So, unlike our first problem, there is, there in a first problem, there was no connection between your inputs. But here, there is a connection. What is the connection means? Whenever it is SW1 is on, your L1 was on. But whenever SW2 is on, L1 was off. Like in third exercise, right? So when this is on, L1 is on. When this is on, L1 is off. Now, they are introducing the third contact, which is on to make your L1 again on. Right? So I have told there are three concepts you need to have in your mind to understand the ladder logic concept completely. What is the first concept? concept is, whenever you want to turn on an output, there should not be any disturbance in the line as I have shown you here, right? Whenever, the second one is, whenever you want to turn off the output, use a NC contact, that is a, this one. So, two concepts we have already used in the third example. Now, whenever you want to turn on the output, which was already turned off in the previous step, how you are going to turn on again means using a parallel contact. But where to use the parallel contact is where the line got broke. Just try to understand. Now, here is the place where the line got broke, right? Because of SW2 only, my L1 was off. So, here only my line got broke. So, I, here I need to find a route to reach L2, L1. Suppose if you are traveling from one place to another place, you are finding some, uh, uh, you know, some road uh, or traffic or some blocks over there. What you will do? You will find some other way, right? Same concept. You need to find some other way parallel to this. So, parallel means you can use the branches. So, there is an option called branch here. So, from, you need to skip this, right? So, you need to find a parallel path. So, click on this place and click on the branch. So, once you click on the branch, it will give a branch like this. Just drag this branch and keep it after the contact. So, can you see? It's like a parallel path, right? If you are not able to travel this route, you can use this route. So, I'm going to get one contact here. And that contact is our new contact, which is SW3. Yes. Now, even though this fellow is off, you can find this way to reach your destination so check for errors go online run that's it. yeah turn on your 
first input output is on turn on your second input output is off turn on your third input output is again on how output is again on means this line got broke but from positive rail to negative rail i am taking this route can you find sw1 sw3 and it is reaching your destination power will be flowing like this positive rail to sw1 then sw3 then it will go and like this it will go right so this is the third concept to make contact to break contact to again make the contact use the parallel contact that's it right so these are all the four examples we have seen in our next session we'll start the logic gates and we need to write a program for the logic gates i'll meet you in the next session bye